Hello there. Many moons ago, actually back in May, although some of the videos came out in June, I did a review of the iFlight Green Hornet, one of the three inch Cine Whoops that seem to be quite popular now. And I had one or two problems with it. Quite specifically, I had a bit of a range issue where, aside from the fact that, you know, the VTX wasn't fantastic, I was getting a lot of link quality messages popping up and I actually had a RX loss in my maiden flight, which made me wary. Um, but the biggest problem I was getting is motor heat, uh, really, really hot motors coming back from the flights I was doing. So I wanted to uh, try and get this fixed and engage with iFlight about how to do this. So I think I finally got it sorted and I thought I'd show you my journey and, and what I was doing with iFlight and, and what happened. So essentially after that initial review, uh, I got in touch with them and said, look, I've been flying this and the motors get really, really hot. Is, is this a problem you've picked up on before? What can I do? And they they sent me over a dump of what the regular default should be. And I, I had a look and there were a couple of very small changes there somewhere in the filters, although I hadn't changed anything. So I set those all correct. Um, they also said, if you can fly it again and if you still got problems, send us a black box log. So I, I deleted everything I had in my black box ready to get it again. The other thing I wanted to do is I, I thought the active elements on the little uh, XM Plus might be being blocked and I thought what I could do is just take them out of the little tubes which look pretty but don't really serve a purpose and see if I can get a better range there. So I took it out again still way back in June and gave it another try. Hey there, so I just did the first battery of this one and apart from the fact my GoPro battery was completely dead, that's annoying. I still had it on just to act as weight because I wanted to check out the uh, heat of the motors which are not as hot as they were they're not cold they're certainly warm but another battery will do it why well, i've done this one because obviously we were able to get further but we still had link quality flash up so i have dragged the active elements through a bit more to see if this gives a better signal so let's give it another another go just on the fpv camera and see what we get so after that second four minute flight better signal i uh, still get link quality pop up a lot but certainly no problems in keeping the signal however motors still very hot this one barely keep my fingers on it so that's much hotter than it should be so let's get the black box logs over to iFlight and see if they can suggest anything else I quite like the idea of uh, a, a manufacturer like this being able to or being willing to look at your logs and, and tell you what the issue is so iFlight looked at the black box from that flight and came back and said, hey, you've turned off the throttle limit. This could make the motors overheat. And I had done because I saw it and it was just part of my rate settings. You know, I changed my rates to how I like and I noticed it had a throttle limit and I thought, oh, this is just to help people fly gently. I'll change that. But no, it's, it's so the motors don't overheat. So I think we can see just how close to on the edge the motors are. So I put that back on. I have to say I wasn't completely convinced by it because I wasn't going around full throttle all the time but I said you know I'll retest it I'll recapture black box if it's a problem and uh, we can take it from there I did a little bit of research on the link quality warning and found out it's a warning that's not normally switched on it's just literally something that's in the OSD here and you can see I've switched it off I did a little bit of research into Betaflight to see what it was and it's basically a sort of rapid drop of RSSI going sort of under 70% or something like that, which I didn't think was a particular thing to have a separate warning about because when my RSSI gets low, I get a warning anyway. And, you know, it's acceptable, I think, in most circumstances for RSSI to drop a certain amount as long as you're looking for it. I think that's okay. Surely if it, um, if it went from like 100 to 40, you'd really want to know about it. But the fact is going, you know, between like 90 to 70 or something doesn't seem uh, a big deal for me so I've turned it off and then I went back out again to refly it yet again uh, and see what we came back with this time okay another attempt at this guy this time we've put the motor limit back on we've done the antenna thing and we've turned off the annoying uh, link quality messages let's see if the motors are gonna heat up or they're gonna be all right okay so that was one five minute flight on this thing with an 1800 battery and I just put my fingers on here and literally uh, uh, they burnt my fingers. The front motors are intense, ouch, <laughs> really really hot, I mean insane. The rear motors, they're warm but not too hot. 
it's got to be the like the front mounting of this like if you hold it in the middle obviously it's going to tip that way because it's holding up this gopro um and most of the weight is at the front and it's just it's just not surviving these motors are going to burn out at this rate very quickly um i was starting to get some oscillations i wouldn't be surprised if that was the motor just struggling there so I can't really try this again because it's going to explode. I'll capture that black box and I'll send it back again and say, look, I tried it this time. This is what happened. So the black box logs went off again to iFlight and they said, oh, it, it, it should be fine. We, we can't see there's a problem with anything you're doing. Perhaps it's a bit heavy. Have you tried moving the battery back? And I'm like, yeah, as far as, as it would. But obviously there's a GoPro on the front. And then they came back and said, we think it's too much weight. And I said to them, well, this is how much weight it is. And I sent them this little screenshot of uh, Instagram I took when I was sort of making fun about how heavy it was. And what I asked them is like, well, what's the max weight it can support? And I'll, I'll see what I can do. And I really didn't get an answer. And at this point, um, I don't know if they lost interest or they were they, they were moving locations and stuff like that. But I had to keep chasing and chasing and chasing. And several months went by until they came back and said, oh you've got one of the first batches from Banggood and they were keen to stress it's not the main reason we've changed everything but we've now changed it to use Zing 1408C motors, Nazgul Cine 3040 which can have better performance in those ducts and uh, we've also replaced the frame so pretty much replace everything except the main stack uh, and, and they're saying well we can send you this if you want to try it out and of course I'm like well sure because I'd like to see if it can actually fly nicely so then we wait and I had to chase up a few more times before we eventually got them to dispatch the stuff but eventually it got here and this is brings us up pretty much to today all the way over in October so I'll run you through exactly what happened what we got and uh, what happened when we tried it okay yesterday this turned out from iFlight it is a package containing motors but some other stuff as well uh, aside from stickers that we don't really care about these are new props and uh, we got some other bits. Let me show you what we got. New, these bits, got the inner thingies here. The new frame, which I haven't really looked in detail yet. It looks very much like the old frame, doesn't it? But we'll see. A lot of screws and some um, printed bits, some more lipo straps, some more bits of sticky friction things to keep the batteries on usefully. There's a frame assembly guide and most importantly, the motors. Hopefully these are the things that are going to make all the difference. These are Zing 1408-3500kV. Do they look different from those ones? The quick answer is no. I mean they seem to look exactly the same but the props look maybe different. Anyway, uh, we have to take this completely apart and rebuild it back with the bits we've got there now so that's the next small job to do. Well, here I am halfway through my build and basically I've just put the new motors on the new frame and I've hooked it up to the existing stack we had essentially. Um, and I've just had a, a much more closer look about what's going on just to show you what the difference is. And first, I, I couldn't notice what the change was here because we've got 3800 um, 1408 here and this is one of the old motors and you can see it's also a 1408 uh, 3800 but the difference is in the letter this is a zing e there's the e there the new ones are zing c's so that's the difference c versus e let's hope it does make a difference now at first i couldn't tell any difference in the frame at all uh, and this is the top of the frame it's just going to pop on like that but the difference is a bit more obvious if i bring back the old top part of the frame and i overlay that on those central holes and if I do that you can see that this older frame is a bit smaller if I turn it over you can see how the holes have been made larger on the new frame and this because each hole is larger we've had to move those out a little bit so the entire frame has just become a little bit longer because of it um, clearly there was there's perhaps a problem with the props getting too close or maybe striking uh, the sides there. The last thing was the prop. This was the original prop we had. This is the new pop, prop and this is one of their own Nazgul props. A bit rounder, not quite so cut. The pitch looks about the same uh, but just a little bit a little bit nicer looking. Doesn't feel quite so blunt as that one does. Anyway, 
Um, I stopped here because, yeah, of course, no doubt these motors are going to all be spinning the wrong way. So I'm going to connect that up, make sure the right, uh, motors are spinning the right way before I put the top on and then uh, ready to put the, the new props on and then we'll be up and flying again, hopefully. Well, here we are again, the Green Hornet's back, frame changed, motors changed, everything else um, I've set up in the same way because I wanted to make sure it, it was the same. So GoPro 7 on there with the traditional GoPro mount. We've got uh, 1300 milliamp hour for us. I'm, I'm erring on the size of caution as far as battery size goes because I think we want to keep the weight down as much as we can. So 1300, I've got 11550 depending how it goes. And uh, yeah, let's let's see what happens when we fly this. Let's see if the motors overheat or, or don't essentially. It is a colder day than normal. Um, it's definitely uh, a bit nasty. There's a bit of moisture in the air, a couple of drops of rain. I don't think that should affect um, the motor cooling that much. I mean, they'll help a little bit, but if they're, if they're overheating because they're overworking, uh, the colder air is, is not going to help too much while it's flying around, I don't think. But let's try and see. <laughs> So what I wanted to do is fly each of the batteries um, straight after each other, basically giving a, a little bit of a stress test because essentially we'd have the quad in the air for quite a long time and not allow it to cool down. After each of the batteries, I would then check all the motors out and see how they felt before going on and doing the next one and try and just record my feelings about it, which I'll just share a, a few of the bits with you here. Okay, let's unplug you and let's have a feel of these motors. Oh, success, partial, a tiny bit of warmth, but it's not really warm in my hands up, which are quite cold. So I think that's good. Uh, I'll put the other 1300 on and then we'll try the 1550. Okay, after the second 1300. There's a little bit of warmth, but it's hardly anything. This sounds good. So 1550 goes on. We'll see if we can stress it a bit, see what happens. <clears throat> oh, hello. Something went weird with the camera then. Decided to pitch forward a bit. Uh, must have been some interesting looking stuff. <laughs> That's better, right? Temperature. We are certainly a bit warmer after that battery but I would still describe them as, as being warm, but not hot. Certainly not too hot to touch. I'd say stick to 1300s to be safe, but yeah, the rest seems to be going quite nicely. So, hooray! So finally, it's fixed in the fact that it's working okay and doing what it should do and not overheating. I think one really crucial thing to talk about whenever you're flying any type of Cine boot here is the weight. It all comes down to how much these things are carrying. It's you wouldn't really put a big GoPro on a tiny three inch quad and what you're doing is you've got a three inch quad with more around it and more weight and you're asking it to lift up really inefficiently. So these things are really on the edge. They are sort of stressed. So it's hardly surprising that, that the balance can easily be tipped over and them overheat. And I get a lot of comments about people saying this or that Cine Whoops overheating what can you do? So I think the most crucial thing on this one is to keep the weight down where you can, and this means the, the LiPo. As much fun as it is to get a, a longer flight and maybe tempted to use 1800s or 1550s, even the 1550, the sort of the bit of heat was coming back a bit more. 1300s, it ran cool. And I think I wouldn't go above that. You know, you just take the shorter flight times, you just take more batteries with you and do that. Still very much, as I've mentioned many times, a niche product in my opinion. It's not something you go out and fly for fun. It should be something that you're going to do a specific purpose for. And that's normally for filming where you've, you you haven't got control of everything around you. So there might be people around, might be stuff that you don't want to risk injuring and bashing into. That said, now I've only had a couple of these things. These are all the rage everyone's speaking about. Would I choose this as the Cine Whoop I'd go with? And the answer would surprisingly be no. As much as I like iFly and think they make very good stuff, the little Ishin Savator, Cavita, whatever it's called, uh, completely outflew it. First off, it's got a, a nicer flight controller and just felt smoother in the air. It's got slightly different motors. These are 1408s, these are 1507s. Maybe that slightly larger motor uh, gives it a little bit more smoothness, stops it overheating. I didn't have any overheating problems with this one. 
um, it flew really nicely, good F7 on board. Much better camera, this camera sucks, and I didn't have to fiddle around with this to get the range issue sorted out. I've had people complaining about problems with this one, and people complaining that they've got the Zing C motors, as I've already got here, and there's still a problem with them. So, I, I don't know what to say, if you've, if you've got a problem with your one, it's worth getting uh, in touch with iFlight and reporting the problem and see if they want your black box dogs, see if they can diagnose anything and seeing if they can resolve the problem. That's really all I can suggest. Aside from the fact that I don't really quite know why these are so popular because I don't think there's that many people going out and doing commercial filming on them. Um, I, I really wouldn't encourage you to get this as something that's like, oh, it doesn't matter if we bump into a wall or a tree or stuff because it's they don't fly as well. They're just like, Take a normal five inch, take a three inch, learn to fly it, take the crashes, and uh, you know change your bunts prop. These are flying okay, but they they're just not as good as your standard quad without all the extra weight and ducks and stuff like that. That said, it's fixed. Hooray! We've got a working one. Uh, thanks to iFlight for helping me out and getting there in the end. Hope this video has been helpful, especially if you're having problems with your own cine whoop. Keep the weight down as much as you can contact back with the manufacturer if you've got a problem, see what you can get there. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.